Hello, hello. All right, before actually, I'm, there we go. All right, so for everybody who is brand new, if you've never met me before, um, my name is Michelle Estrada Liber, and I don't have a fancy name. I don't call myself anything really in particular. I, I do know that I'm a healer. Uh, I love people. Uh, I love teaching, and I love bringing encouragement, hope, um, and transformation breakthroughs to people. And a lot of this stuff came to me from my own personal experiences and um, just living a life that was not fulfilling, not satisfying, um, fraught with a lot of turmoil, addiction, um, turmoil in relationships, uh, just not feeling fulfilled, feeling trapped, feeling stuck. I'm sure a lot of you guys can, you know, relate to that. Um, in every area of my life, I was feeling so blocked from living a life that I wanted to live in every single area of life that I had. And so um, me being who I am, it just sent me on a search for answers because I knew there was something better. And my search led me here uh, to what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today. And this is some amazing stuff. I've been studying this for three years. This particular uh, chat that we're going to be talking about, I just didn't know that we were going to be, that what it was, was the um, relationship between, you know, your inner masculine and inner feminine. And I didn't know that that's what I was studying. Uh, that just dawned on me about a month ago. And for some reason, when I put that puzzle piece in there together, everything just clicked. Like I understood the dynamics, I understood the energy and stuff like that. But for some reason, when I was able to see the the, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about when I get into um, the chat. When I was able to view it as this is masculine, this is feminine, and I'm talking about the inner workings of all of us, you know, men, women, female, however you identify yourself, each within our own souls and our own energetic makeup, we are all made up of masculine and feminine energies. And if those terminologies uh, cause too much, you know, um, what's that, Cog uh, di cognitive dissonance, is that what it's called? <laughs> then you can label it however you want to. You can call it mind energy versus heart-based energy, however it works for you, okay? For me personally, I, I just, I see it as masculine versus feminine. So that's how I'm going to uh, relay that information to you today, okay? And so um, let's just get into it, all right? So um, this particular chat is about uh, how to activate your feminine and why would you want to do that, okay? And we are talking about activating feminine energy because most of us, um, especially if you are experiencing any kind of dissatisfaction uh, in any area of life, uh, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling trapped, if you're feeling hopeless, any, any kind of dissatisfaction in any area of life and you feel like you're hitting a brick wall. 99% uh, of the time it's because we are too masculine dominant in our energy. Okay. So what does it look like when you are too masculine dominant in your energy? And remember, this can be relating to anything. Okay. Whether it's a goal you have in your um, business uh, if it's related to your dynamics and your relationships, anything, if you are struggling with letting something go as far as like maybe you're dealing with a loss in life, you know, the loss of a relationship, the loss of a business or a friendship, you know, any kind of a loss in, including uh, grief, you know, the loss of a loved one as in death, um, this can help you. Uh, balancing out your masculine and your feminine energies and activating your feminine and living out of your feminine can help you overcome pretty much anything in life, okay? I've used it to heal addiction. I've used it to heal heartbreak from my recent separation from my husband. I've used it to attract um, a beautiful, loving, uh, soul-based friendships and relationships into my life. I've used it to improve the existing relationships in my life. I've used it to um, 
attract a steady income, a passive income. I, I've, I've used it for everything, okay? And this is why this is so exciting to me because um, it's not anything that you have to buy. It's just something you have to learn. It's something that's innate that we just forgot or never learned how to do. Like this is something that was pretty um, innate when we were younger. And then we were taught as we were older to um, live in one energy and not in the other, okay? Um, and you'll see that as we start to talk. So when, so think about a goal or think about a situation in life, whether it's a relationship, a goal, something that you're struggling with resolving, something you don't have a solution to and you wish that you did, okay? Um, uh, Tiziana, I will tell you all about that here in a little bit. And let me tell you right now. So um, this is going to be a very general one because what I'm going to end up having to do is break this up into subsets as far as um, different areas because these things can be applied in many different ways. Um, and the dynamic for feminine versus masculine, using it for goal setting purposes and reaching, you know, leveling up in certain areas in life um, is going to be different uh, in how you, obviously in relationships, right? But I will tell you guys, um, I have never seen the, dyna the dynamic between feminine and masculine uh, relation uh, energies at work. I've never seen it <laughs> so vividly as when I started putting it into play in my actual relationships, okay? And I mean, with your, my spouse and my kids. Okay, I'm still working, I'm still studying on how it works with my kids, but let me tell you, when I started actually putting this into play with my, with my husband, who I'm separated and we're currently working on things, um, that boat turned around very quickly. And I'm talking about a boat that was on the wrong path for eight years and just button heads and, ah, God, okay, I'll have to save that talk for a whole nother... <laughs> <laughs> a whole nother one, but I'll, I'll touch on it briefly, okay? So Tiziana, I'll let you know what the dynamic was in terms of feminine and masculine, because it all, it's the same thing. We're going to talk about this based on energy, okay? Because this is how your mind is going to understand it. So masculine and feminine energy uh, always needs to be somewhat in balance, okay? It has to be. It can be a little bit in favor of one versus the other, but when you're too dominant in one and then the other one is either deactivated or not activated at all is when we start to see a lot of problems, okay? And so um, in the current society that we all have grown up in, um, you know, it's always been, you know, in, you know, we've always been encouraged to be very independent, um, self-providers, self-sufficiency, um, you know, do, 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 act, act, act never rest, <laughs> you know, just a lot of mind-based energy, which is, you guys, masculine energy is good, okay, in its healthy state, okay, masculine energy has its place, just like feminine energy has its place in feminine energy, when it's, you know, too overly dominant also can be, be very problematic, okay, so I don't want you to think that one is worse than the other, that's not what it is, um, masculine energy has a place in all of our lives, okay? You need masculine energy to get shit done, <laughs> but you also need to learn when to pull your energy back so that, you know, you can clear the space for, um, you know, whatever answers and solutions you're needing that you don't have control over, you know, over those things materializing and manifesting, okay? All right, so let's talk about... Let's talk about energy and what this looks like energetically, okay? Um, so when you have a specific goal, all right, we'll talk about that. Uh, maybe you're wanting to level up. You're wanting to reach a specific maybe status in your business or a certain promotion, or you're wanting to make a certain kind of, you know, money, or you're wanting to grow your team you know, to a certain point in your business, right? Uh, and maybe your overall goal really is just to have financial security because maybe you've never felt like you've had it, okay? Um, when you think in terms of energy, 
you know, law of attraction kind of things, you know that like attracts like, right? When you have a magnet, <laughs> you've got like attracts like, okay? So thinking in terms of energy, think about how you feel and the thoughts that are going through your head when you are, you have a goal and you've gotten to a point in the process where you're getting frustrated with it. Um, you're kind of resisting the process. You're not too happy with the way things are going and wanting the manifestation of that goal is creating feelings of not what it feels like to not have it right okay and so we're going to talk about this in terms of wanting the energy behind wanting something and how that is causing a block to you actually receiving it manifesting it okay and this goes for goals this goes for relationships this goal this goes for anything in life whether you're struggling with an addiction of any kind, you're having a hard time losing weight, you need to manifest health for a reason, whatever it is. When you are wanting something, you are in an energy of resistance and you are creating um, an energetic signature of you're saying to the universe, I'm wanting. And so the universe is just going to respond in kind. It's going to say, oh, okay it's reading that signature is wanting. So I'm going to continue to give you um, situations, events, um, behaviors from other people, interactions from other people that are going to keep you in a state of wanting. Does that make sense to people, to you guys? Okay. Think of this because this is going to help you really apply this and, and keep you on track once we get to the part of actually uh, stepping out of being too masculine dominant and stepping into our feminine, okay? Um, so just think about the energy. So think about the thing that you want. This is you and this is the thing that you want, okay? And in between you is, you know, this energetic channel. And so when you are wanting this thing over here, but you're not experiencing it, you're feeling, you're filling, <laughs> you're, you are stuffing this channel with energy of wanting so you're creating like a block between you and this thing and this thing wants to come but it can't because it's like oh you want me uh you know you are you are sending energetic signatures of not experiencing me so i'm going to continue to produce the universe is going to continue to produce you know like i said events, situations, experiences that are going to keep you in a state of wanting. In other words, not experiencing that which you are wanting to experience, okay? I'm hoping that makes sense. Um, you can, like I said, this is going to be posted on my YouTube channel. I'll be sure that I'll share that link with you so you can go back and watch the replay. Um, but just to make sure that you're understanding the energy behind all of this, okay? so that when you are starting to apply these things, it helps you to stay on track. Okay. This is us getting in line, uh, appeasing our masculine, okay? Masculine is very mind-based energy, and I'm going to teach you how to drop into your feminine, which is dropping into your body, okay? So that is, so when you are too masculine dominant, uh, you know you are masculine dominant in your energy in any given moment when you are feeling frustrated, fed up, you're wanting to fix things, you're wanting to change things, you're wanting a solution, you're looking for answers, you're trying to figure things out, you're trying to fix it, okay? I've kind of come to see this, like I have given this kind of an archetype of like Mr. Fix-It. That's my Mr. Fix-It at work, right? You can call it whatever you want. You can name it any kind of archetype or you can personify it however you want. When you are in that space, when I am in the state of wanting to fix things, that is me being resistant to what is. And that resistance is itself an energetic signature that is causing the universe to give me more things to resist. Okay. And so part of deactivating the masculine and activating the feminine is, um, coming to terms and, and making peace with what is 
so that you can clear the channel between you and that that you're wanting to experience so that this can finally come to you. Okay, and there's there's steps to doing this. You're going to learn what those are. Okay, so that's what dropping into your feminine and activating your feminine and living in your feminine energy and living with those two in balance. That's what it does. It helps to clear the channel between that you and what you're wanting to experience so that those things can finally come to you. Okay. And this works with humans as well. The, the really cool thing with relationships when you're talking about balancing out feminine and, and um, a masculine energy is, you know, uh, and you'll see this with men and women, okay? Um, because most of us are running around and living life in our masculine energy. And so when you got two rams buttoned together, <laughs> you know, that's where a lot of conflict comes from. And if you learn how to live in and respond to people you know that are masculine dominant in your life, which can be women. That's me. I can be very masculine dominant. I've had to learn how to deactivate my masculine and live in my feminine. Um, you will very quickly learn that it is very, it's a very powerful thing to meet somebody with that opposite energy because all of a sudden it's just they you soften up and then they soften up okay it's the coolest thing ever but like i said i'm gonna have to do a completely different talk on that because it's a whole different a whole different thing um all right so now that you know how to tell whether or not you are masculine dominant okay as far as what it looks like when you are in relationship with other people and this could be your spouse and your children um it's i think about it as you're you know uh you're leaning in you're you're you you are thrusting your energy on them you want them to change you want them to do this a certain way that they're not doing it you want them to treat you this way you want them to react this way um and please know that, that we're not talking about not having boundaries. This is not that, okay? Femininity does not equal submissiveness, okay? Femininity does not equal, does not equal weakness. Um, being in your feminine energy does not mean that you are weak, that you are powerless, that you have no boundaries, and that you um, allow people to walk all over you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, okay? Uh, being... Uh, Walking in your feminine energy when you are in relationship with other people basically means, you know, you're still communicating. Uh, communicating is a big thing. Communicating what it is that your needs and your wants are. You're just doing it uh, more softly. You're using a different way of communicating. You are honoring yourself as far as, you know, you're putting yourself on a pedestal and not this other person. Okay. Um, but when you are masculine dominant in your relationships, um, it looks like wanting the other person to change, whether it's behaviors, how they are showing up, um, you know, and that could be manifesting in you as far as like, maybe, you know, you might be withdrawing from them to try to get them to act certain ways. Um, you could be, you know, even manipulating or trying to control through, you know, uh, fits and tantrums and, you know, trying to, cause them to communicate with you in certain ways. And so, you know, fem so when we deactivate the masculine and then we um, activate the feminine, okay? This is what that looks like. So the first thing you have to do to deactivate the masculine and activate the feminine is um, you have to peel your energy off of or pull back, however you want to look at it. You peel your energy off of whatever it is that is causing you um, dissatisfaction in this moment, okay? Whether it is, it is a goal or it is a person, whatever it is, okay? Whatever is causing you to feel um, uncomfortable, all right? You pull your energy back off of that thing because that's what's going on, right? What's happening when you are too overly focused on a goal or a person is you, your energy is thrust on that person or that goal. And it's time to pull that energy back to you. And actually the coolest thing that I've noticed in this is um, when I do that, when I catch myself in my 
you know, masculine energy too much. And then I stop and I'm like, okay, I need to peel my energy back from that thing and pull it back to me. It's an inner, it's an, and I get an immediate feeling from that. It's like, <sighs> now you may not, as of yet, um, like I said, I have been working on this for about three years now. And so the more that you get into these steps and the more you, you know, it becomes instant. And so you'll have to let me know if, um, how you feel when you think about peeling your energy off of that thing or that person or that goal and calling it or pulling it or drawing it back to you. So you're pulling all of your energy back to yourself. Okay. Uh, you'll have to let me know if you, if you felt a, an immediate sensation, whether you felt it instantly energized, if you felt instantly relieved. I, that's how I feel. I, it's, it's just funny because right now me teaching is very mind-based energy right now. And so uh, my energy is on this, um, this, this chat and making sure that I am providing you the information that you need that's going to help you live a better life. That's me and my masculine. So when I stop and I think oh, I pull my energy back to me, it's like, oh, it's an immediate, I'm filled up again, right? And so that's the first thing you want to do, okay? So you want to pull your energy, peel your energy off and away from that thing, that goal or that person, call it back to you. And then the second thing that you do is, you know, you want to drop out of your mind and into your body, okay? The quickest way to do that is, um, and if you have a sensation in anywhere in your body, a lot of us carry a lot of tension in our shoulders and our neck. Uh, me personally, I feel a lot of it in my heart and my solar plexus. And so a lot of the times what I'll do is if I feel like I'm too mind-based is I'll start tapping my heart and then start breathing. Okay. So the fastest way to activate your feminine energy is to get into your body. And that's to feel through your senses. Okay. Notice what you're smelling. Notice what you're hearing. Uh, hearing. Notice what you are feeling in your body. If there's any tension in your body, if you feel there's a lot of energy kind of pent up somewhere, and then you breathe, okay? You breathe. So this is being in your body. Deep breaths from the belly, and then, you know, you inhale, and then you exhale, okay? And then once you're there, we are, we're going to do what we're going to call um, mind heart connection. Okay. This is a uh, heart coherence. And so you can, and you can do this by, if this helps, put your fingers on your heart, you know, or wherever you feel led to. Sometimes it can be like this whole area between your heart and your uh, solar plexus. And you breathe in as if you were breathing in that space and breathing out. Okay. What this actually does is it calms your nervous system. If you close your eyes, you actually, you give your brain a break. A lot of the power that is going on with you right now is the visuals that you are taking in through your eyes. And so if you ever feel tired, like you need to rest, the biggest way that you can stop and conserve your energy and rebuild it is by closing your eyes and focusing on your breathing, okay? So you breathe in through your heart and then you exhale through the same space. Okay, and you continue to do that. At the same time, you want to activate feelings. So you want to bring your awareness back. So what happens when we are in our masculine and we're too overly dominant, our focus is on what doesn't feel good? What's making our lives feel like it's hell or it's just not what, this is not what I want, right? So our focus is on what we don't want. So while we are in our feminine, we're in our bodies, we bring our awareness back and we activate feelings of how we want to feel. We put our focus on things that we are grateful for, okay? And so you want to think about the things that you have to be thankful for. 
And even in, so um, if you're thinking about a goal, think about all the things that you've achieved up to this point. Think about all the blessings that you have, you know, experienced up to this point. And if you can't think of anything that's in relation to something that is bringing you, you know, that thing that's bringing you dissatisfaction right now, start pulling anything that you have to be grateful for, you know, your health, your kids, anything, your pets, the fact that you can get up and walk, you know, whatever it is, you start to focus on something that gives you a sense of well-being. Okay. And what I, what I'm going to be teaching you more on, because sometimes the mind can be very strong and it keeps wanting to put you back over here. So right now, when you're in your feminine energy, you're very centered and you're very grounded and it's peaceful here, but then the mind will kick in and be like, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but <laughs> so I'm going to teach you, um, in, in upcoming sessions, how to deal with that monkey noise, that noise. Okay. That mental noise that is keeping you from staying in your feminine energy. Now, just know this is a habit to build like anything else. And so you might only be able to stay in your feminine energy for two to five minutes at a time, but you keep doing it. Okay. You keep bringing yourself and the more that you work on this, it's just like any other muscle. Okay. You'll start to learn how to quiet this chatter up here so that you can be in here long enough to clear the channel between you and that which you're wanting to experience, okay? And before you know it, you're going to be like a power manifester because that channel is clear. So things are just, the minute you think about something, boom, it just starts to show up, okay? And like I said, um, nowhere did I see this dynamic, um, like how vividly it really works. Uh, nowhere else have I seen it in such like vivid, uh, you know, experienced it in vivid color as in my relationships. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy nuts. Okay. So when you're in that space and make sure, hold on. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. All right. Cool. When you're in that space, okay, and you've brought your focus back to what it is you have to be thankful for, um, one of the other things is, is if the monkey mind, if it keeps, if it keeps blocking you from being here, and one of the things that you do in order to um, deactivate the masculine and get into the feminine is uh, you can anything that that employs the senses, employs the body, anything that's creative, anything that you can do um, to, you know, uh, pottery, you can dance, you can anything that moves your body, anything that employs your senses. OK, um, you know, cooking meals, eating a meal, um, exercising, dancing you know, creating with your hands, painting, music, anything that, you know, is going to engage the senses in your body, okay? Sometimes you just literally, if something is bringing you so much um, dissatisfaction and so much mental noise and you just, you can't seem to escape it, the best thing that you can do, which is also a very feminine energy type of thing, is to take a break from that and go, Focus your energy on something entirely different and get your body engaged in something else, okay? And what that, and you'll notice too, taking showers is something else. Have you guys ever noticed how if you're in the shower, <laughs> for all, for some reason, it's always during exercise, taking showers and doing other things where it's just like all of a sudden, you know, the answers come to something that's been bothering you for a long time. You're like, really? <laughs> you know, now that you know that you can do this consciously, it's the most amazing thing. You know, and part of it too is making sure that when you are disengaging from the masculine, trying to fix it kind of mode, and we're not saying avoiding it. That's not what this is. Feminine energy is not avoiding the issue. Feminine energy is clearing that frenetic channel so that the answers that you're seeking can make their way to you. Okay. So when you are disengaging from trying to fix it and trying to solve it, this is you've probably heard this a lot of times people saying 
um, let go and let God, or, you know, you need to trust and have faith. This is what they're saying. They're saying disengage from trying to fix it yourself and go focus your attention on something else. Basically, this is saying drop out of your masculine, trying to fix it energy and go engage your feminine energy, which is going to help you get your focus off of this thing and your focus over here. And that clears the channel for um, anything it is that you're lacking to finally make its way to you. Okay. Do you guys have any questions so far? Because what we're going to end up doing, and I'll, I'll, I'll go over the steps again, just so that, you know, if you need to write them down, you can, because um, I'm going to be taking your, uh, your questions. So what you can do is, um, and Tiziana, I will actually answer your question uh, as far as, you know, uh, the dynamic with me and my husband. And I, I'm guessing what you're asking is how things were that led up to my, our separation. Is that what you're asking or what was done to bring, to turn, to turn things around or both? <laughs> it's up to you. And then if you guys have a personal issue that you're wanting some help with, you know, go ahead and you can either, uh, you know, raise your hand and I can unmute you or you can share it in the chat. It's whatever you guys want to do. Okay. So <clears throat> going back over how to deactivate masculine or how to step out of your masculine and into your feminine, okay? And number one was to peel your energy off of that goal or that person or that situation, right? You withdraw your energy because you have to look at it as when you're in your masculine energy, your energy is thrusting and it's penetrating it's like an arrow right and so your energy is all over that person and or that thing or that relationship or whatever right and so uh, part of activating your feminine is leaning back pulling back okay bringing your energy back to yourself and integrating it within yourself okay in the um in the dynamics of a relationship, what this would look like if you're having issues in a relationship, it would be to actually stop the conversation, stop talking about it, stop trying to fix it, and just pull your energy back, okay? And then go focus your energy on something that you have control over, something that's going to bring you some joy, whether it be dinner with friends, um, go create something, paint, color, dance, exercise, something, right? Pull your energy back. And then, um, especially if you are experiencing a lot of anxiety, if you're experiencing a lot of frustration, anger, you know, if you feel emotion like welling up in your body, right? Um, you drop out of your mind and then into your body, okay? And I mean, you can use your fingers because one of the things that touching your body does is that it automatically brings you an awareness of uh, your body, which helps you drop out of your mind and into your, your body, okay? So dropping out of your mind and then into your body or your heart, however you want to look at it, and then you breathe. That's the fastest way to drop into your body is by noticing your breathing, okay? And that's the biggest way to get out of your head, all right? And then you want to move your focus, okay, from whatever it is you're not, from whatever it is you're lacking, whatever it is that is making you feel um, the uncomfortable emotions and focus your awareness on that which you have to be thankful and grateful for. Um, and if this includes engaging your senses, um, you know, doing things that bring you joy, do those things too, okay? Call your friends, go out and have some lunch, go have some drinks with, you know, friends if that's something that you can do, you know, go dance, go exercise, all that good stuff, okay? Uh, hold on just a second. Okay, so let's talk about, okay, I'll briefly talk about this uh, in um, relation to how it works with humans, <laughs> okay? And I'll have to, um, there's so much more that I can give in this one, um, this one video, but what I will tell you is uh, with my husband and I, 
for eight years. Um, he was a certain way that I wasn't, <laughs> you know, we, we just had this dynamic and it was like two rams constantly button heads. And, you know, like I said before, the, this is not about um, letting people walk all over you. This is not about um, letting people disrespect you. Uh, this is about making sure that you are putting yourself on a pedestal and you are being able to meet someone with softer, warmer energy, okay? Um, this, so what's going to happen in relationship with other people? Now, what's going to happen is if you are in a relationship with someone else who isn't doing the work or isn't at least willing to do the work, this may not fix, completely fix your relationship. Now, what might end up happening is, especially if you are separated from that person, um, you pulling and withdrawing your energy away from that person. And then when they do show back up into your life or however it is that that happens, and you start responding in ways that are softer and warmer. And when I mean warmer, I mean meeting, you know, you think of masculine communication and it's very just, uh, it's initiating is one thing. So, you know, you want, you really want to wait when you're pulling your energy away from that person, you're basically waiting to receive them, right? And what pulling your energy away from that person actually does is they, they can tell the minute you pull your energy away from that person, you stop calling them, you stop texting them, you stop trying to fix things you stop trying to make things work. You just pull your energy and then you go focus your energy elsewhere, you know, making new friends, um, engaging in all kinds of different self-care, um, you know, whatever kinds of hobbies you want to get into. Like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to start seeing how I feel about doing pottery. I love dancing, uh, exercising, coming up with exercise routines. I started focusing on, so when my husband and I separated, um, that's what I did. Like in, in the very first, in the very beginning of the separation and we separated, uh, let's see, about five months ago. So we separated in late April, okay? And for about the first three months, you know, we were back and forth with working it out, not working it out, working it out, not working it out. And things got even so bad to the point that he was on dating apps and actually dating other people. Okay. And so me and my masculine energy, I was, you know, very forceful, very corrective, very dictating, very controlling, very, um, wanting, you know, not to say that it's not a good thing to want someone to treat you right. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's very, you know, that's self-love. Self-love is wanting someone to treat you right because you deserve to be treated right. The rub here is when you are trying to force someone through whatever means to try to get you to be that way. Okay. That's in your masculine energy. So what ended up happening when I finally started employing these techniques and I started withdrawing my energy. I stopped initiating co uh, contact. Now we have kids together, so we can never really go no contact. Um, but I stopped asking questions. I stopped trying to work on things. I, I just stopped, right? I made peace with the way things were. You know, I wasn't happy. And as far as like where we were at, but at the same time, I realized I can't change him. The only thing that I can do is what I can need to do to make me happy. He's not in a position at this moment to make me happy and I'm not going to wait around for him to make me happy. So I'm just going to stop. Right. And so I withdrew my energy and I focused my energy elsewhere. I'm like, well, what can I do to make myself feel happy? Because I'm not going to, you know, that creates its own energetic signature. So when you are feeling um, anxious and what's that feeling that you get when somebody that you love very much is possibly wanting to end things, you feel empty inside, right? And that itself is an energy that 
they can pick up on. And it's not, it, you know, I don't want to say anything about its attractiveness, but it's, it's not anything that pulls them to you. Okay. So when you pull your energy back and then you start doing things that make you feel happy, guess what that does? That makes you so much more appealing energetic wise. And then literally you clear that space between you and that person. And all of a sudden it's like, boom. <laughs> and you guys, okay, no kidding. Um, we've been working on our marriage now for, it's just, well, I should say that I've been in the dynamic of my feminine energy in this relationship now for just a month. And, you know, things have done a complete 180. I even got some flowers from them today. <laughs> it's nuts, right? So as far as uh, Megan with your situationship with your neighbor, okay. The only thing that you can do, so, okay, you've pulled back, right? You've pulled back. Um, are you still initiating contact? Are you texting him first in any way? Or are you, you know... Are you doing anything like that? Good. Okay. Just leave it alone. Okay. So when you are pulling back your energy, what you need to do now is go focus your energy elsewhere. Go try and cultivate those feelings. Like even if you're feeling empty, go try and fill up those moments with other things that are going to, even if it's a temporary feeling of satisfaction, do those things. Okay. Yes. And, and continue filling up your time with that. Okay, continue doing that. So um, if, the, if, you, if this person was in any way ever attached to you, how long has it been, by the way? Yeah, how long has it been for you in uh, this, this the two weeks? Okay. Um, so if you, okay, do you ever kind of feel like you're missing him still? And do you ever kind of feel feelings uh, well up to where, you know, you're missing him, you're feeling empty and stuff like that. If any, if anything like that ever comes up where you're missing him, you're having a hard time, like getting through that moment. Great. All right. Okay. So the cool thing is, um, if you're actually almost to a space of not missing him, <laughs> um, you know, it could, it might be very soon. You just want him to want you. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. All right. So if you ever get to a space, so even if you're in that space, you just want him to want you, right? Because we all want to be wanted. So if any time, um, any kind of a memory of that person comes up, what you want to do is tap your heart and send him, you know, your love, your adoration, your gratitude, whatever the good feelings that you might be having for him. Okay. Tap your heart and let it go. Okay. This is also clearing that space. So if the two, if, uh, because the relationships employ two different people, if he is that person for you in your life, then that's going to clear the space for you and him to come together, okay? But at the same time though, also understand this, okay? When my husband finally decided that he wanted to come back into the marriage and work, th work on things with me. I was already in a space with him where I was like, I don't care if this doesn't work out because if you're not what's, what's best for me, then I want to be able to let you go in love, no hard feelings, and then go find whoever it is who is supposed to be the universe's best for me, right? So I was in that space where um, I wasn't toiling, right? Did, I, did that mean that I didn't miss him? No, of course I missed him. And of course I wanted things to be a certain way. But so what I started to do in those moments where I would miss things and want things to be a certain way is I'd tap my heart and I would send him love. Tap my heart and send him that love, right? And because he still has that attachment to me, it didn't take long at all for him to finally do like that 180, okay? But the big, what made that happen though was me I stopped meeting him with my, my, my masculine energy. Okay. Because it's when he's, when a man is in their masculine energy and you're in your masculine energy, it's like two Rams button heads. It's not pretty. <laughs> and honestly, if you're a female, if you're a woman and you are attracted to masculine men, um, men don't want to be with, you know, women who are dominant in their masculine energy is they, it just, it doesn't, end up working out very well for very long. I mean, I've, I have 
personal experience. I know this myself. Um, hold on, I'm reading your messages. Oh gosh, yeah. So, okay, I will tell you, <clears throat> as a female or as a, you know, a woman in our mass, in our feminine energy, um, oh yeah, I know. Okay, so if you, Megan, if your primary uh, area that you are feeling less satisfied in, because you're going to have to be, uh, you're, you're, you're going to have to be, have your masculine energy at play in several different areas of life. Okay. And anytime you need to get shit done, things need to get taken care of. You have to take action because, you know, you are going to have to learn how to balance both. Right. Um, this is so much about just being able to, um, hold on just a second, being able to know when you're too dominant in one and not, um, you know, balancing the other, not one's deactivated basically. Okay. Oh, appearance has nothing to do with, with having your feminine energy. <laughs> nothing at all. You know what, you guys, I know, I know women who are, who get their hair and nails done every week. They wear dresses, they wear the most feminine stuff and they are always in their masculine energy, masculine dominant. And I can see it in their relationships constantly. Okay. Um, this isn't, uh, we're not talking about stereotypes as far as when it comes to feminine energy, this is just a way of, uh, showing up. So when we are talking about dominant, you know, masculine versus feminine, it's just knowing when you're too dominant in one and not, um, you know, not active enough in another. Okay. I was actually very dominant. <laughs> in my male energy for a very long time, because I was always taught that that's what I needed to be in order to be successful. I didn't realize that you needed a balance of both. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's totally understandable, totally understandable. And what you'll start to find out too, is it just depends on what area of life you're wanting to employ these techniques. Um, you know, you don't have to look any certain way, although you'll kind of find as you start to live in your feminine energy, that just kind of starts to happen, okay? Um, and when we talk about the dichotomy between masculine and feminine in the realm of relationships, I'll get into that in more detail, all right? Um, was there any other questions? And then, uh, Megan, what I'll do with you, um, I'll just make sure, I don't know if you're in my Facebook group, um, it's called soul purpose activation, um, soul fire tribe. What you can do is that's where I'm going to be posting a lot of these, um, uh, you know, these meetings and these chats so you can continue to get help. Okay. With me, as far as these go, um, yeah, it's not about not being in your masculine energy. We have both and we have to be balanced in both because you can actually be too feminine and not enough masculine, right? So it has to be balanced and it's learning how to do that. Um, and so what we're going to talk about next, um, the next time we have a discussion, which will be tomorrow, I'll set it up for tomorrow at some point, probably the same time, uh, the actual steps to how to quiet the mind enough so that you can clear that channel between you and whatever that thing is because sometimes it's just like you know i want this i want that i want something to be different i want to fix it and then when you're not able to find a solution the mind just won't shut up right <laughs> and so that's what we're going to talk about next because that's a whole nother like hour <laughs> so uh, make sure tomorrow if you're not in my group get in the group it's called um soul purpose activation soul fire tribe find it in facebook ask to join and then uh, make sure you have your pen and your paper ready okay it's going to be yeah it's going to be so good okay and any other questions for tonight you know not okay <laughs> this is going to be uh the replay of this is going to be posted on youtube i'll make sure to post uh the link once it's uploaded um on my page and then in the group as well so if you want to go back and, and look through it and take notes and stuff you can hi nicole <laughs> I see you, girl. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, get out of here. 
I just want to make sure that everybody got what you needed. Thank you so much for joining me. I loved all your questions. Your energy felt so good. And I'm so excited to teach you guys how to do this because this is the literal answer to everything, right? All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.